Us Brits are among the fattest in the world. Run for the Nandos! It's a national crisis, and for some it's a matter of life or death. There is no hope. There is no hope for him. If she carries on, she will die young. Welcome to a supersized summer camp that claims to have the answers to tackling the obesity epidemic. Diets and boot camps don't work because we're forcing something on somebody that they may not be ready for. But its methods are controversial. Nice big healthy lunch. Oh, yeah. The kids dine out on fast food. Give me one person. Now it's being greedy, Jordan. I'm not Pad being greedy. Padding. Padding. What, two bits of milk? Yeah, Would you drink fine. that? Would you drink that, too? Chips and pizza are on the menu. My first impressions of the food. I would like more, obviously. <laughs> That's why I'm here. And the staff are barely older than the campers themselves. Does anyone play with their Barbies when they were little? They're ridiculous. They don't have a clue. I'm telling you, they don't have a clue. For some campers, it'll be the longest five weeks of their lives. So hard. But for others, it's life-changing. <laughs> Does this radical approach work? And is this really the answer to teenage obesity? Well, where's the effort and time? Our camp gets results. I'm going to go with the chips and a burger. Get that belly moving up and down! Jiggle, 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 jiggle. It's week one at Europe's only residential weight loss camp for kids. So today we're doing loads of exercise. I think football is okay, but it's not like my favourite. I prefer eating. That's a sport. That is a sport, actually, <laughs> in America. 15-year-old <laughs> Katie from Surrey weighs 17 and a half stone. Katie is naturally lazy. She will quite often find an excuse for me to pick her up. She's got too many bags or she needs the toilet. There's always something. Katie's battle to lose weight has been a long-standing family issue. And it's why she's joining 85 other teenagers for five weeks to battle the problem. Katie has always been under the dietitian at Kingston Hospital from the age of two. In fact, I think she's probably their longest serving patient. When she went to a party as a toddler, the other children would go off and play after tea, whereas she never seemed to feel full. I guess like all my life, I don't know what it's like to be thin. As well as overeating at mealtimes, Katie's a regular snacker. I definitely have a, like, an, like an addictive personality, definitely. I like bread, wraps, pitta, anything like that. I try and have like healthy muesli bars, sometimes find those under the bed. You know, she's constantly wanting to satisfy her sugar craving, I suppose. This is my like inspiration board. Uh, I don't really use it that much, there was like a couple of days where I sort of was like, yeah, let's lose weight. And then it sort of ran out, but <laughs> hopefully, yeah, I'll be able to use it after camp to motivate me. Katie has set herself the goal of losing a stone over the five-week camp. If she's going to meet this target, she needs to change her habits and thinking. My first impressions of the food, I, I would like more, obviously. <laughs> That's why I'm here, but... <laughs> But, yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's the end of week one and the camper's first big challenge, a two-mile run. Are you ready? It's the benchmark used to monitor progress each week. We've got the two-mile run today. Well, run slash walk. Every camper's run is timed, and each week the aim is to beat that time. So I'm so out of breath and I've literally done like one metre. For Katie and the other campers, every day of the next five weeks will follow the same pattern. Structure is critical and forming habits that are positive is critical. Professor Paul Gately, a leading childhood obesity expert, co-founded the camp with Leeds Beckett University 16 years ago. The way the day works, 
and you have three activity periods in the morning, which can be from educational experiences. This week we're going to be talking about the media and body image. To, you know, exercise, sport. Come on, boys, race each other, race each other, are you? So in the afternoon, there's lots of physical activities. Continuous hooks, left, right, that's it. Till I see a stop, keep going. The early days of our programme are about building their fitness up slowly. Come on, fight it. Come on, mind it, mind it. And what we see is a sort of slow increase in their fitness, building them up to enable them to be successful when they return home. Run it for your boyfriend. The five-week camp costs over £4,000. Some are funded by the NHS or local authorities, but Katie's family have paid the bill themselves. My husband and I were sort of at the end of our tether with it all. I gave her the brochure and she was furious. She didn't speak to me for the rest of the day. I'm glad we don't have to run because at school we always do. So walking is a lot easier. If we complete this, we should be allowed the Wi-Fi password. Oh, I've got a really bad stitch and it feels like someone stabbed me. I'm not running up this. It takes Katie 36 minutes to complete the two-mile run. I'm quite lazy. I mean, I shower and everything, <laughs> but, like, just relax on the soap. Like, I don't do much exercise. A lot of people describe her as um, happy, funny, very friendly. And I don't always see that nice, funny side of her, which is quite sad, really. Obviously, I'm not happy all the time. I used to have breakdowns about my weight a lot. But yeah, I'd say there is like a subconscious, like, armor that I have. I'm quite sensitive. I'm not really that body confident. Like, people who don't know me obviously judge me more on looks because ev everyone, like, is judged on looks, like, first appearance and stuff, so, yeah. Come on, nice and quick from your face, nice quick movements. Most of the staff are students with a background in sports science, nutrition, psychology or education. We're not here for ourselves. We really are invested in these kids emotionally. It is a pleasure just seeing them change just so much over the course of the camp. For most of the activities in camp, boys and girls work in separate groups. We want kids to develop social skills, so we put them in their own age and gender group so they can build relationships and develop their sort of social skills to be more successful when they return home. 14-year-old Lana weighs 20 stone. She's come with her 12-year-old sister, Alicia, but a few days in and she's struggling to make friends. Lana arrived with quite low self-esteem, I think she thought, you know, I'm the biggest and I'm different to everyone else and things. Do you want to go out and get some air and go for a walk? Come on, we'll go get for a walk. Come on. She feels a lot of people are talking about her today. They're not. They're not at all. They're not. It's so hard. When, they, when you get to that, you need to come and talk to a staff, OK? And then, so we could take you away from the situation. We could chat to you. I think you just, there's just miscommunication. Do you want to go back in or just, just want a breather? Just want a breather, OK. Take up that. I know they've called me stuff. I just choose to, like, put it in a box, lock it up and not think about it. Because if I start thinking about it, I'll get really depressed. She'd rather risk getting run over by running across the road to get away from kids than to face them. Lana has had a long history of bullying. They used to tease me about my weight and then they teased me about my name, what well, is backwards. The bitter and spat and called her names. You wish, you just wish more for your kids, you know.
let me made up a rhyme. She is big, she's fat, she bounces on the ground, it's Lana. Sometimes I just walk away, but then they all start chanting it and it gets louder and louder. I stay on because I just don't want to hear that. Every year she got older, she put a stone on. So like when she was two, she was two stone. When she was three, she was three stone and so on and so on. And then it just bloomed out of control. We did all sorts of things to try and, you know, help lose weight and to extreme of padlock in the kitchen. She's actually eaten raw sausage, dried pasta. Once I saw half eaten like tins of corned beef, it looked like she'd just been like getting at the meat with just her fingers. That's that's not normal behaviour. It's the start of week two, and there is a way in to measure Camper's progress. Your protein, is that right? Yeah. The kids that come to camp um, will all lose weight which is due to the calorie controlled diet and the amount of exercise we do each day. But they have to still really push themselves to get the most out of the programme. It is really important for them to see their progress. And also it shows that the hard work they're putting in their sessions is paying off. But Lana has only lost one pound. We're really concerned with Lana's weight loss this week. We did expect her to lose quite a bit more than what she did. At the moment, we're not entirely sure the reasons why she didn't lose as much, but it could be down to her not pushing herself enough during the physical activity sessions. For many of our parents, they have weight problems themselves, and what they're trying to do is not let their child go down the journey that they've been on. At home, Lana and her sister Alicia have a lot of responsibility. As young carers at home, we cook, clean, help my mum in the shower, help her out, help clean her, and do the washing up. Ready? I'm very blessed to have two girls what like not only uh. likes cooking but wants to learn how to cook. When she was really young, she was outgoing, she was bubbly, you know. Then it started turning. She shut herself off from everything. Because of Lana's disappointing weight loss, staff member Pippa intervenes. Would you like to set some goals together? So maybe, you know, the MC, I think. Do you know what your best score is so far? I never asked. You never asked. I think it's around the 40 minutes. So we could try and do around the 30. Could try and aim for the continuous weight loss of maybe at least three pounds. Because what did you set your goal weight as? I uh, don't know. We can like set like real goals in that, and then you know, then you can see if you do accomplish them, and then that will really build up your confidence. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. Cool. A target or a goal is only worthwhile if you feel you can achieve it. Given her weight, she'll have been set many goals and targets before that she'll have only ever viewed as she's failed on. It'll be fun. It's a new experience. You're challenging yourself here on camp, and that's another challenge. Yeah? Yeah. Over in the boys' dorm, the weigh-in has revealed dramatic results for 15-year-old Adam. He came to camp weighing 20 stone, and in just one week, he's lost over half a stone. He may be the biggest loser among the boys, but he's not happy. I've told them over 10 times that I've wanted to go back this past week. But every time I bring it up, they just say, well, management's getting onto it. He's so determined to go that he's already packed his bags. Hello, is that Adam's mum? Uh, he's lost uh, quite a bit of weight this morning from monitoring. Um, so what's your sort of thinking behind him staying or going? I want him to stay. I want him to stay because the big friend. Right, OK. So you're happy for us to just try and keep him on site and just encourage him to get involved in sessions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Cheers. Bye. Bye. 
I'm hoping today, the fact that he's found out he has lost some weight, that it'll, it'll give him that motivation to continue and stay here. I do think Adam enjoys this. He has just been homesick. He needs to get as much out of this as he can. We're trying also to get across that he needs the right mentality for life. We do think that if he did see the process through, his life will change, hopefully, uh, by a great deal. But even slight change is, is, is a very big step for these guys. I understand it's hard for him, but nobody's going to solve your problems but you. He doesn't know how to mix in society. And I think that's a lot of his problems. I like wake up at like, eight o'clock at night and then sort of wake all night. Where he wakes me up between three and four every morning through screaming at his PlayStation. In fact, I don't see him. He comes out of his bedroom maybe once a day to collect his takeaway. And that's about it. I was about 10 when I started growing on weight. I eat just because it's good. I get bored a lot just sitting, doing nothing. When he was two years old, if I wouldn't buy him sweets, he used to grab me by the hair and drag me down on the floor and kick hell out of me. Adam's life revolves around pizza takeaways every day. I'm cook. He drinks gallons of the stuff, up to six litres a day. So when it does, I don't know how I'll deal with it, but yeah, he's going to die through obesity. A few days later, and Adam is missing. The boy has disappeared. We don't know where he's gone. He was there for breakfast and for lunch, and then he disappeared. Actually, quite scary. On average, we will get two, maybe three campers running away each year. If you're a child, where would you go? Mm. Most of the time, they don't actually leave the campsite. They're usually just wandering around the fields or they've gone back to the dorms. I just want to say, to start off, I don't want you to be alarmed or worried, but we've just um, done a count with the campers and Adam isn't currently in the session. He would only have been missing 20 minutes, so he can't have got too far. As his mother, do you think he's the sort of person that would have gone? OK, then, so we do think that there, there is a potential he may have left the site. So we need to be in our car. It really does kind of bring it home that you are really doing a serious job here and you're working with kids, vulnerable kids, and you are responsible for them. Turn left. Turn what are you on about? Left. I don't think they will have got this far. We're on our way back to camp now. After an hour of searching, Adam is located back at home. I saw him pull up in a taxi and I, my first reaction was relief that he was safe. But then obviously I did what mummies do <laughs> and gave him what for, for, for walking out. It's not a pleasant place to be when you're getting babied all the time and so that, that's why I thought of it as like a prison. I'd say it's for, more for the younger kids than the older kids. I'd love him to sort his life out. Something has to click in his brain. It's down to him, nobody else. He's got all the knowledge. He's just not got the motivation to use it. I think some of the kids that we've had that we couldn't get through to, they're either too far gone or they need a lot more help than we can offer in five weeks. And that, that does frustrate you sometimes. Adam decided not to return to camp. There's an obesity epidemic in this country. It's through people chucking crap at their kids because it's cheap. You know that people who watch this will blame the parents. What do you say to that? Well, I, I, when I look at, you know, I've done it myself. I've looked at other overweight children and thought, you know, what is that mother doing? Why is she not doing something about it? You know, it's easy to judge. It's not as though I haven't tried everything. And now I know just how difficult it is. I wish I could have a magic wand and, you know, help her. But at the end of the day, Lana's got to meet me halfway. 
I'm lost. Where Adam's concerned, I'm lost. Don't know what to do. Life is harder for bigger people, end of. It's the end of week two. Katie is taking part in a session about body image led by staff member Nicola. So we've got all the girls together, think good, feel good. And these sessions are devised to talk about self-esteem and body confidence. Two things that everyone growing up, everyone as adults struggles with. I'm a 15-year-old obese girl. <laughs> it's not even funny, I don't know why I'm laughing. It is quite funny. Oh. <laughs> Think Good, Feel Good is about talking, it's about sharing, it's about attitudinal change in order that they then start to think differently and feel differently. And sometimes when we get bullied, bullies will say something to us and we've got our friends saying complete opposite things, we're saying lovely things about us. Do we sometimes end up actually just going home and thinking about the mean things someone said about us? Always. A lot of people came and their identity was, I am fat. And that was so sad to see. They need to change their attitudes, believe in themselves and build up their confidence. And that is actually much harder than just losing weight. At home, Katie's parents have tried to help her lose weight, but so far nothing has worked. They've tried like locking all, away all the food. Like I was, I was really angry and they drove me to school so I couldn't get anything on the way to school, took all my money away. But I just found ways around it, like just borrowing money from my friends and stuff. It made life at home really, really hard. Obviously, she wants the best for me, but it's sort of sacrificing our like, relationship together. Katie's offered a one-to-one -one session to discuss some of the issues she's had with her mum. I don't even understand myself. I don't like it if she praises me for doing exercise, but then if she doesn't notice, then uh, that makes me really upset. And then <laughs> I hate it when she like mentions weight or anything. I don't, I feel as though when <laughs> I said this, I feel as though if I lived on my own, I'd be able to do a lot better. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just don't like the topic at all. Like. You don't like to discuss it at all. I was going to say, yeah. well, it sounds though like it might actually be so maybe a self esteem thing because if she's to praise you, it means that, you know, it's a bit drawing attention to what, yeah. what you've done. And sure. sometimes then it can then you feel pressured, like, oh, now I feel like I need to do it more, or you've pointed out that I wasn't doing it before. There's so many things that suddenly yeah. can start to yeah, go around in your head. A lot of our campers do have really low self esteem, and that's why we need to pay as much attention to it as possible to try to help them to learn these different ways so that when they go home, they can continue those positive thinking skills. Thank you. <laughs> At camp, all meals are portion controlled and calories allocated according to a camper's age, height and weight. It's not counting calories, but it's a way of helping them understand portions, understand meals, understand snacking, so that they're more equipped when they return home. Some of the menu choices may seem surprising. On a Sunday, we have a Sunday roast. It's pizza, it's jagged potato sandwiches, lasagna. They give us like pizza. Like, why would you give us like dough? Dough is not good for you, do you know what I mean? As I walked in, I thought, God, I hope I don't have to eat rabbit food. It'd be unrealistic for them to go home and live off salads. What we're trying to do is work with those children so they lose weight at a very prescribed rate. We're not driven by the latest diet trend. We're driven by what the evidence gives us best results. Complex carbohydrates in a range of foods are critical. We also know that we want to reduce the fat content and we want to maintain a good protein content. So that is it. Halfway through camp, and the kids are about to make plans for lunch at a very unexpected venue. So, you know you go in McDonald's on Wednesday at the trip. So today's session's based on you planning out what you're allowed, based on calories. Any time I've ever told a friend to go to McDonald's, like, what on earth? Like, how do you do that? But the point of camp is it's teaching them a realistic, healthy lifestyle. We can't say, never have fast food again. That's not realistic. They will carry on these behaviours. Uh, Amy, yeah. guess, guess what? Guess what? what? There is more sugar in a mayo chicken than in a fruit shoot. <laughs> right! The 3.2 grams of sugar's in a salad! So instead of saying, no, don't do it, 
We'll teach them about the calories within the food, how to have a meal within their calorie allowance. So that works, doesn't it? Basically, you can pick anything you want within your calorie map. Uh, I'd suggest possibly not going for fries because they don't fill you up that long. Drinks-wise, I'd stick with zero drinks or water because liquid calories aren't, they're just going to be wasted. So I try and get as much of your calories from food as possible. 17-year-old Jordan weighs 18 stone and he's allowed 800 calories for his lunch. I wouldn't think you'd go to like a fast food shop and actually get food when you're like a, a weight loss camp, so yeah. it's rare. It is a weird feeling, um, you know, taking them to an outlet like McDonald's uh, when it's a health-based camp. I got my berry, berry burst ice fruit smoothie. I got that in the large, but I changed that to a medium and that had less calories in, so I swapped that. And now I've got enough to get an ice cream, so I'm going to write an ice cream down. And that's what we done. Is it just about calories, or is it about nutritional content as well? It's about nutritional yeah. content. Okay, so which would be better, ice cream or fruit? Fruit. Like we'll be better. Right. Ding. Okay, well done. <laughs> I'm going to change it to food. I think they should be teaching this in schools because young kids out there don't have a clue what they're eating. Now, does anyone not want McDonald's and wants the packed lunch that we provide anyway? Aaron. So it's just you, Aaron, that wants a sandwich? OK. Out of the boys, only Aaron has opted to have a packed lunch instead. I think it's all right to have a treat now and then. It's just you can't have it as a full-time thing. Aaron is from Selby, North Yorkshire. He's 16 and weighs 20 stone. Aaron has overeaten for years, and breaking that cycle is a battle I've had for years. At home, I was just stuffing food in, and not, I was literally just eating for the sake of eating when I wasn't even hungry. You know when he's volunteered to make him a cup of tea, he's going to see what he can get out of the fridge. Because he'll say, do you want a cup of tea, Mum? It will even take like a packet of ham, a packet of corned beef, any pre-packed meats that are in the fridge. I hate it when corned beef sticks together. Another reason why I came here was because over this like last year, I've gone through two bed bases, a wooden one and a metal one, both broke because of the broke because of my weight. Weight has always been a major issue for Aaron's family. At 16, his sister weighed 34 stone and underwent gastric bypass surgery. She was so poorly at the time, it's hard to consider turning off life support after being in and out of intensive cares for a few months. He saw his sister there, all these wires and tubes and everything, and it just totally messed him up. She survived but the radical procedure didn't solve her eating disorder. What I'm most scared about is, if I didn't come here, is that I'd turn out like my older sister. She went from obese to skinny to anorexic in a short time. This summer camp is the last option. If he carries on eating like he is, it'll probably eventually kill him. Camp could be Aaron's last chance to avoid surgery, but he's low in confidence. When I was at school, whenever we were playing basketball or something, I wouldn't be past it because of my weight. I used to feel quite good so then I could just sit out. But then I realised that it's not helping me. Right, boys, before we start, I'm not having you pick and choose the sessions you join in with. If you're fit enough to do this one, then you're fit enough to do the dodgeball, all right? I don't want you to say you've got an injury and 10 minutes later you're fit again. If you've got an injury, it doesn't cure itself in 10 minutes, all right? Nice and quick off the line. Can we catch him? Can we catch him? Do a job for your team. Go, go, go. Faced with the daily physical demands of camp, Aaron is taking every opportunity he can to sit things out. Obviously, I don't want you to run out and pass out, but I think you can give it a go. Even, even just walking is going to be a bit better for you. Or a little jog. It'll be 10 times better than just sitting down, won't it? And everyone will, everyone will help you out in the in the activity, all right? Good man. Aaron would sit out of a lot of sessions and you were, you were never sure 100% if he's injured or if he's faking it or what's going on or if he just can't be bothered. I feel with Aaron it was a little bit of tough love. You can give him that time where you can sit with him one-to-one -one and speak with him, but he needs to know that that's not 
going to fly every session, every day. It's not just the physical side of camp that Aaron is finding difficult. I haven't made many friends here, but I've made a few. Aaron's very much a loner, very much a hermit. He spends all his time in his bedroom. He's not self-esteem or self-confidence. People, like, give me disgusted looks when I do actually go out. Most of the time, if someone's coming towards me, I'll literally cross the street, put in my headphones, put my hood up, and then I'd cross, and I'd just walk down the street on the opposite side. I think when they first come here, they're very shy people. It takes the time for them to come out the shells a bit. Uh, they, most of them don't think they're good enough. Um, most really hate themselves. Do you want to change, though? I do, wa I do want to change. Staff member Adam has been given the task of trying to refocus and motivate Aaron. There's quite a lot of stuff you can do with a bench, isn't there? Sitting, that's one good one. I like Aaron, he's, um, he's a cheeky kid. Yeah, he, uh, he's definitely got a sense of humour. You can go for like a minute, let's go. I, can go, I can't go for a minute. Well, try, just see how long you can go for, I'll time you, right? Can I just kick the chin instead? But why don't you try this and we'll see how long you can go for? He hates walking anywhere. He just doesn't like any form of exercise whatsoever, and if we can get out of doing it, all the better, as far as he's concerned. Well, let's see if you can go backwards. I can, I can barely walk straight. I can't walk backwards. Well, then give it a go. High knees, high knees, high knees, high knees. I can't knees. just walk backwards. Huh? I'm just going to walk backwards. This is what I'm talking about, mate. What? It's so frustrating. I know you can do it. I reckon he's, he's motivated and he wants to change and he wants to get healthier. Do you reckon you're maybe a bit too negative about yeah. what you can and can't do? He puts himself down a lot, which is really frustrating because you know he can do all this stuff and you see him doing it and then five minutes later he's saying, no, I can't. We know you can do all this stuff, so why do you keep telling yourself you can't do it? I just don't know. You don't know, so why don't you just do it? I guess the main thing we're trying to change with him is getting him to think, I can do this, I've already done this, I know I can do it, let's go do it. I know, yeah, I have got to work towards it, it's just... I know, but think of how you'll be when you finish, when you lose weight and you oh, become yeah. healthier and, you, you know, you feel more confident and you go outside with your, with your mates and... Mm. Mate, you'll be so happy when you get there. I'm going to take on board of what Adam was saying to me. Today, the campers are on their trip to Manchester's Trafford Centre. It's a deliberate test for the kids. Bontons. The environment we live in now is setting us up to be unhealthy. There's going to be triggers everywhere. Oh, so nice. Well, Not to have to down. walk. There are so many shops within walking distance, so many food outlets. The world outside is trying to say to you, like, right, let's see if you can fail. The lunch has been paid for by McDonald's. To people who say you're sleeping with the enemy by taking them to McDonald's, you know, what would you say to them? Camp will only be successful if we can give kids the skills and strategies to deal with the outside world. The outside world is there are fast food restaurants, there are sugar sweetened beverages, and if we don't prepare our kids for that environment, we're going to fail them. Unlike the other campers, Aaron chose to have a packed lunch instead of the fast food. So you're happy you picked that over the McDonald's? Yeah. Right? I came here to use where the McDonald's just couldn't put it back on, so the sandwich is a healthy option. Why is that? Do you just feel better for it? or? I feel better. Yeah? It's a good choice, mate. It is, and it's nicer. Yeah? Every Wednesday, a trip day is sort of a chance for us to put into practice what we've learned in the lifestyle sessions. So that's the kind of test of self-control. It's not a happy meal for Jordan. We've got no sugar, got no water, got no Sprite, got no salad. I think he felt like he was missing a food item, but I cross-checked my Excel spreadsheet, cross-checked the food order at McDonald's, and um, he w had it in front of him. Have you got any more milk? I might need one more sugar. Yeah. I want more milk. Nick, Jordan, what are you doing? Want some more milk? You've, you've, got, you've had your milk in your tea. I haven't. Is that the same as everybody else? You can't just take milk. it like oh, that. You've got milk not, in your tea. It's black Jordan, tea. Will you pass the milk back to me, please? Why? 
are. Because you've had milk in your tea. Oh, look, being, drink that. You're now I'm just being greedy, Jordan. How am I being greedy? Two bits of milk. Yeah, would, you right. that? would you drink that? Right. Would you drink that tea? Would you I drink don't drink it? tea, so no. That's it then, that's it. Don't talk to me, please. Don't talk to me. I fucking hate you. Fucking shit. They're ridiculous. They don't have a clue. I'm telling you, they don't have a clue. Jordan wanted more milk in his tea, also wanted more sugar within his tea as well, which obviously is uh, not something that he's allowed because he, it would t take him above the 800 calories that we've allowed for him to have for his lunch. She's so rude. How can she call me greedy? She's really rude. I reflected a lot on that situation and perhaps maybe how I could have dealt with it better. But I still stand very strongly my, with my decision. And, and some people may think it's pathetic that he, all he wanted was an extra sachet of milk. But for me, it was really important that, you know, he learns to have discipline and self-control. I'm going to go with the chips and a burger. I don't feel guilty at all because they gave us, like, a certain amount of calories. And, like, they obviously do this every year and it hasn't made a difference. Because I have such an addictive personality, I think after here I'm going to have to try and like completely avoid all the like bad foods because I think I can easily like fall back into like my usual routine. It's going to be difficult. The fact that they've had all this control, they've had all of us encouraging them to do the right thing, they now need to do that for themselves. After lunch, the campers can spend £10 of their own pocket money. It's another deliberate temptation. Sometimes we have a binge day. I bought a pot of Pringles, a pack of cookies, and two sausage rolls, but I'm sharing them with someone else, so. I don't know, yeah. I feel as though, like, because I haven't had, like, one of those days in a while, and it's, like, about having one of those days and then, like, getting back on track, because I don't think you can completely avoid, like, those foods at all, like, because they're there. <laughs> I just feel really guilty now. I feel like, I don't know, I feel really guilty. I don't think I'm going to eat it. Should we literally go return it? Like, I don't think you can return food. I don't have a receipt. I'm going to go ask the security man. Come with me. Katie decides to return everything. I've never really felt like that before. Usually I'm just like, whatever, but I felt so guilty then. With Katie's £10 that she was allowed to spend, she made some poor few choices. After doing that, she had a chance to self-reflect, and the healthy decision was the one she made. Tonight, there's a disco, a chance for the girls and the boys to socialise with each other. I don't know any other time we've really, like, been able to talk to them properly. I... Yeah. So... I don't trust just, us. I think we're gonna get pregnant. <laughs> we're at we're fat camp, there's not gonna be any good looking boys. <laughs> That's true. Well, let's well, not to be judgmental. Be judgmental. I mean, you said that. We're big too, so. Yeah, but still, it's true. <laughs> Everyone says it. Well, back home, I know a few boys did like me, but I didn't really take interest in it because. I didn't believe it. Boys don't look at fat girls, they just think that's minging, don't they? If you're really, really big, I wouldn't go nowhere near you. I think getting a boyfriend is a lot harder when you're heavier because everyone is so judgmental of each other. If you're going to have a boyfriend, you want one that's going to like you no matter what. If it's based on looks, the friendship, then there's no point. Like, I'm not really bothered because I've got, like, GCSEs coming up and things, like, but it would be nice to, like, I don't know, be liked. For the staff, the disco means being extra vigilant. We have something called Snog Watch. So we do, actually, the staff are very much on top of, you know, seeing what's going on. We're on Snog Alert tonight. There's a lot of uh, little young romances going on, so we're uh, <laughs> keeping our eye out for that. Holding hands, absolutely fine. A hug, absolutely fine. But, you know, when it starts to progress, that's where you start to think, hang on, we've we'll just got to keep an extra eye on you there. We do know a few girls have a few crushes on some of the boys, but um, we're not too sure who that is, so keeping an eye out. <laughs> it's actually quite funny, particularly the younger ones. 
in a relationship for about two days and it's over, if at that. That's like, oh my God, I was in such a long-term relationship. We were together all week. The disco was rubbish. <laughs> it was very boring. We talked to like a couple of the boys, but um, as friends, <laughs> but like, yeah, it was quite boring. I, it, like, it wasn't like a usual party, I don't know. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I would say why, because <laughs> there's no alcohol. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, any disco without alcohol is not a good disco. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Let's go, it's the start of week four, and Lana is beginning to take the exercise sessions more seriously. Sit ups, girls, come on. And off you go, girls, as many as you can. This is the last time you can do it. Sit up. Keep going, just work through it. Well done. Well done. But socially, she's still feeling isolated and she's fallen out with her roommate. Sometimes room pairings don't work. It is all potluck and sometimes there is a clash of personalities. At the moment, Lana isn't getting on with Salem, so we're going to move another camper, Destiny, into the room. My first impression of Destiny is that she's a complete opposite of me. She's a girly girl. She has loads of makeup. Like, you looked at my side, it's like, oh, there's nothing there. You look at hers, it's just like full. When I first started packing, I just put my shoes in and then I thought, I've got like five pair of shoes already, but it's fine. I need lots of stuff. And I've brought enough for about three years. There's too much. I shouldn't have brought all I brought. I didn't need it, but oh well, it's done. <laughs> Destiny from Swinton in South Yorkshire is 14 and weighs 13 stone. This will be her third time at camp. If you used to eat a lot of junk. You wasn't educated on food. You were quite chubby there, weren't you? Why? That's being nice. In year seven, I got bullied ridiculously. I've been called all sorts. I'm obese, I'm a pig, I'm disgusting, I'm vile. And I just used to go home and cry. And my mum would ask what were wrong and I would just I'd say, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but you've come a long way since then, Dust. I know, but... The reason I'm going back for a third time is I think I could do with a boost to help me get a long with journey, and I need to come to end now, I think. Previous camps have helped her lose two stone and boosted her confidence and self-worth. When I went to camp, I was 12, and I was 14 or 15 stone, and I was big, I was a size 18, and at 12 years old, I don't think that's appropriate at all. Two years ago, she was half the person she is. She didn't have any confidence. She just used to stay in her room. She was quite depressed for a young girl. Um, her schoolwork weren't fantastic. This time, she's won English Star of the Year this year. So that's all down to her confidence as well, I think. It says Diva Destiny because, obviously, I were a diva. I were loud and in your face, pretty much, if you don't want to be friends with me. You had no choice. You had to, because I'm destiny. I've got a new roommate. Someone called Destiny. Yeah. 15. Sometimes the right room pairing can have more of a positive impact than we can. Hopefully having Lana in a room with Destiny, Destiny can really help Lana come out of her shell. It's karaoke night. So, just got to pick some to wear now. Last year, everyone dressed up and wore skirts and stuff. I was going to sing, but then I was like, no. Oh, sing? Go on, have a sing. I didn't know the lyrics to the song I was going to sing. Like, I knew a bit of it, but not all of it. And if I got, like, the songs wrong, uh, I'd be like, mm. And I was scared what other people would think and say. Don't, honestly, never, ever worry about what other people have to think about you. Just think about it then, because at the end of the day, what does it matter what people think? It's you you should be trying to please, not anyone else. Lana used to put herself down so quickly, like she'd make a good thing a bad thing. No one's gonna judge you, cos everyone's the same. It's like me, I wear what I want. Like, literally. Why are you gonna sing in the karaoke? What wear something like this a few months ago? 
Yes. Yeah, I'll probably ne nibble or anything like that. Why? Because I got stretch marks. It can. No one cares. Honestly, no one cares. No one cares. Everyone here is like the same. We're, We're all just... family. Yes. It's like when I was trying to talk to her about changing who she is, she thought it was so hard and she couldn't get into it that you can change. She, she just thought she was stuck like that forever. You don't believe in yourself enough. You need yes. that bit of, yes. like, confidence and motivation. It's the final week and the last two-mile challenge. Run for the Nandos! Kid I'll do. Over the five weeks they've been here, Katie and Lana have struggled with the demands of the weekly run. Come on, you could go quicker than that. Come on. When I was at one of the terms, I was thinking, this is it, I'm going to collapse, I'm going to have a heart attack, I'm going to die. Come on, Lana, keep going. Don't you dare walk on me. Katie is off to a determined start, but she will have to work hard to beat her best time of 36 minutes. Really out of breath. My search has gone touch wood. But yeah, I think I beat my time, I hope. It is hard when you have weight problems when you're young, because all my friends are, like, really thin, and no, nobody in my year is, like, the weight I am. They think I'd be a lot happier and a lot, like, healthier if I lost weight. Katie smashed her best time by six minutes. I am quite tired, but I feel like more like positive. Because obviously, like, the hormones are released and stuff. Endorphins. Oh. <laughs> Keep pushing, just run to me. Pippa set Lana the goal of running rather than walking the two mile challenge. Come on, Lana. Keep going. You're doing so well. So well. You're going to thrash it at this rate. Pippa's encouragement and helping the TMC. The last one, I don't think I would have run it without a help. Come on, Lana. Just think of what an amazing achievement it's going to be. So proud of you. All downhill now. Yeah, let the gravity take you. Woo! Come on, Lana! 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 Although I was pushing her really hard, I knew she could accomplish it if she really pushed herself. This was my choice and I'm trying to make a difference with myself. I'm in charge of my own willpower. As camp draws to a close, it's not just Lana and Katie who have found new motivation. Instead of sitting out, Aaron is taking part too. I feel good. I've only got several days left, so I might as well make it worth it. We stepped it up a bit this week, and yeah, he didn't give up once, and he's got right through it, so really proud of him. You know, he is saying himself that he left so he wants to get the most out of this. So that shows a good mind shift really, a good behaviour change in him in such a short space of time. When I came here, I didn't know anyone and I didn't want to. Now most of these people, most of my group are my friends. I think Aaron, he likes his own solitude sometimes and I don't think there's anything wrong with him spending his time to himself sometimes because he does come out and he does speak to the others when he, when he, when he feels like. My hair. Aaron does need this. He needs his knowledge and he needs to, you know, make the change now. But he understands that, which is great, and it's half the battle. <laughs> I just realised what he was doing. When I came here, I didn't feel like my own person. These last two weeks have been important. They put up my self-confidence and at least I'm trying to change. Five weeks completed and camp is coming to an end. For all the kids, there's a final way in. Okay, well done. Katie managed to beat the target she set for herself. 
a plus a stone and a pound, which is really good. Like, I was aiming for over a stone, so I achieved my goal, which is really nice. Come on over, Lana. Lana had never set any goals for herself until Pippa set her a target of losing three pounds each week. Okay, and then we'll just do your waist circumference if you want to step off for me. In the last week alone, Lana has lost five pounds, just under a stone in total. Before, I didn't go out of the house as much, and probably after camp, because I think I've got more confident. You should be really happy with that. That's really good in five weeks of camp. So, well done. Aaron is worried that unless he loses weight, he could end up needing bypass surgery like his sister. There it is. 124.1. In the last two weeks, Aaron has lost six pounds. He's lost three kilograms in two weeks. So that's about, that's just, that's about six or seven pounds. Yeah. yeah. Six pounds six to be exact. To be exact, yeah, well done. Yeah. Mm. So that's healthy weight loss, so it's good that you don't want to be losing much more than that. The waist circumference has gone down as well. Not yeah. that much. He certainly has come out of his shell a bit. He's, you know, there's a, there's a big difference between the way he was with other kids when he got here and the way he is now. The camp's talent show is a final test of the kids' confidence. When we position talent shows, is thought through because we know that it takes them out that amount of time before they start to reach that point where they're going to get on stage. We know that they're starting to be, feel more confident and expressive, and that gives them an opportunity to do it. My skin colour's actually pretty dark. When I did my makeup in the morning, she'd like look at me and she'd like, you look so pretty. And I'm like, makeup's not everything. It doesn't make you look pretty. It's just an extra bit. Now, like, one day I'll do yours. And then I thought about it and I thought, what well, if I do it tonight? I bet it'll give her a confidence boost. So I said, right, if you sing, I'll do your makeup. And she's like, oh, do I sing? Do I not? She's like, I'm not doing it. I'm like, you are. I'll put a bit of that on your lips and then you're done. She was laughing all the time. Even the more confident campers struggle with being centre stage. Fuck, I'm literally shitting myself. My mum's all about me singing in front of an audience, like, Katie, yeah, you've got to do all these things. Sing, sing. If I could sing, I would stand up and sing to everyone. I'm like, no, you wouldn't. No one who truly cares. I don't know, I just don't... I don't think I'm that good at all. Before, I feel really nervous, and then when I'm performing, I feel like really confident. I guess I learned that I can be strong. One of my favourite things about camp is actually seeing the difference in their confidence. For me, it's seeing them when, you know, they feel better about themselves than actually get up on stage at the talent show and singing in front of all the campers, which you would have never done before. When Lana sung, I thought she was very brave of herself because she's showing like what she can do. She don't care what people thought about. I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose. I'm hoping when I'm old enough, I want to audition for X Factor. Absolutely love it. You show me down, but I won't fall. And she did it, and I'm like, she's actually done it. And I was so proud of her, knowing that. She's like, that were her fear, and she'd done it. The positive thing about karaoke is that I wasn't hiding behind people. <laughs> a little longer. 
Your little moon. Oh my God, I'm so proud of you. That was an amazing achievement. She shone. She did so well, and we were all so proud of her. I do feel proud of myself. I'm going to give you a hug. It's going to... There you go. I'm See. happy that I, like, got up on the stage, sang, and didn't want to puke up. So camp's a relatively short period of time, and we won't see massive change in their weight, but we see massive change in how they think and how they feel and how confident they are. It's got the ball rolling, and definitely I'm going to continue when I get home, for sure. Since camp, Aaron started college and made more friends, but his weight remains a problem. Lana has maintained the weight she lost at camp and she's feeling more confident at school too. Katie has lost a total of 30 pounds and this summer she plans to trek around Vietnam with her school. Next time, Amy's full of attitude. Fat bitch coming through. You ginger bitch. And Stephen's in big trouble. <laughs>